One of the most powerful tone shaping tools we have in the Helix is one that maybe some folks don't even realize is there or realize just how powerful it is. It is something we received in firmware 3.5, and I'm referring to the ability to move microphones around in our cab block. Previous to 3.5, we could simply adjust the distance and the type of microphone that we had, which were both very powerful tools, but a long requested feature was the ability to move the microphone on and off axis as well as forward and backward. And by adding that feature in, it opened the doors to seemingly endless possibilities. And some folks maybe don't have a history of miking actual real guitar cabinets in real life so they may not really understand just how powerful a feature this is and some folks maybe get intimidated by it. In my discussions with folks, I realize that sometimes people just don't want to touch these things because they don't want to mess anything up and they don't really know what the different adjustments are going to actually do. So in today's video, even though I've done videos on the new speaker cabs in the past, we're going to dive in and go really in depth into just how powerful these controls can be and how we can utilize them to really shape our tone in a powerful way without maybe having to resort to extra EQ blocks and all the issues that could potentially come along with those. So without further ado, we're going to be dealing with Helix Native today within Cubase, and I'll show you exactly how we can use these parameters to hopefully get more out of your Helix and be able to dial your tones in in a manner that's going to give you even better results. All right, so here we are over in Helix Native, and I have a, a very basic little preset set up. I didn't really dial anything in here because the point of this video is going to be see how powerful this new cab block can be. I do have a little dynamic ambience reverb at the end just so that we're not hearing something that's so direct and bone dry. Just to add a little bit of uh, realism to the sound as if it was being played in a real room. I opened up the Placator Dirty to its default settings. I didn't even mess around with this. I think I did turn the C45 off. I'm not too crazy about that on, so I turned that off. And I decided to use one of the new firmware 3.60 cabs, the 112 Open Cream, which has quickly become a favorite of mine. Really killer cab. And it comes up with these stock settings, the 906 Dynamic on the cap edge, distance of two inches, and the angle at zero degrees. We're not gonna be talking about the low and high cut today. This is obviously something we could always use in the Helix, and you still can, but I've discussed that in previous videos, so it's not gonna be part of today's discussion. So the first thing that I like to do is, I like to choose the mic that I want. Now, I've done videos on this in the past where we really want to explore the characteristics that each microphone kind of has. Uh, every one of these mics is going to have its own unique characteristics. And if we can go through, and I've done a video on this in the past where I've explored each particular microphone, but if we can kind of know instinctively which microphone will work really well for very particular situations, we can kind of go to that right away, get the microphone we want, and, and then deal with the position and the distance. So I'm just gonna leave this on right now at these default settings. This is the sound we get. I'm playing my Vigier GV Wood Semi Hollow Body. Okay, nothing wrong with that tone, not a tone that I would use just as such. So let's see what we can do with it without actually changing microphones right off the top. So what I like to do with any of these controls is to explore extremes so that we know what a control actually does. So if we take a microphone close to the center of, and let's actually also just do this, we'll bring the distance back to one inch, but if we have a microphone basically dead on the center of the cone of the speaker, it's going to tend to accentuate upper mids and highs, and it's going to be a, a much more abrasive sound sound. Okay, so I'm not liking that, but now we understand what that position does. Let's go to the other extreme. So extremely different sound here, right? So again, we can go over here. And one thing we can do, I'm using Helix Native today, but if we were on our Helix, we could assign this parameter to an expression pedal. And as we're playing, kind of sweep through this kind of dimmer switch between the two settings. So a lot of times we maybe want to start, and this is a starting point I like to use, is the cap edge where we can start to balance the sound between these ultra smooth tones and ultra bitey tones. So somewhere in here, we're probably gonna find something. Mm -hmm. 
that is a better mix of those two things. So we can we can just mess with that until we find the positioning that works for us. <laughs> All right, so that's not the only tool we have now. The other thing we can do is come down to the angle control. Let's take a listen to how this affects things. The angle control is going to be very interactive with how we have the position and distance set as well. You'll notice here that, as I mentioned before, when we're pointing right in the center of the cone, we get a little more harsh frequency. So if you'll notice where I'm positioned here off even further than the cap edge, we're aiming straight for basically the side, the edge of the speaker or sort of halfway between the edge and the, the center of the cone. So if I angle this back towards the cone, you'll hear a little bit more of that brightness come back in. Do you hear that upper end kind of come back into it? Now, if we were on the center already, you're gonna have to be listening on a good set of headphones or speakers to really be able to hear this. If you're listening on an iPhone or iPad, you, you may not even hear the difference when I engage that angle switch. But that can be just another subtle EQ that once we have our position and our distance set to where we think we want it, we can play around with that angle just to see if one setting or the other just gets us even closer to where we want to be. Let's leave that at zero degrees for now. Now, what about the distance control? Well, the distance control is really gonna act like an equalizer in that it's going to kind of cut out the bass frequencies at the low end. It's gonna be a big effect on that. And hear how it really thinned that tone out. So you can see if we had this back at a uh, you know, position of center on the speaker with the distance all the way back. We're gonna have a very thin tone, right? Versus having the distance close up with it on the edge. We're gonna have a lot of the low end. So once we understand this, we can start dialing in our microphones much quicker, right? So coming over to something like an SM57, right on the center of the cone, one inch back, we're gonna have a very kind of abrasive sound. Not something I would like, but if we pull that distance back, we thin it out even more, but we take that all the way to the edge. We actually have something more usable, I would think. Now, a lot of folks will look at that and go, well, that's just way too extreme. I can't have it set all the way to the end like that, but you know, ultimately, if it's sounding good, if it's giving us a tone that is inspiring and that works for us, then who cares how it's set? Set it. Turn this off, start playing, and forget about the settings and just be happy. Have a great tone that's working well for you. Now, anybody who follows my channel will know that I really love living in the whole ribbon mic land here. And the 160 ribbon is a real favorite of mine that I find to be a very balanced mic. Even if we're one inch back on the cap edge. <laughs> Gives me something very pleasant right away. Now you might find maybe that's a little too full in the bottom and that's why I would take maybe this distance control. I still get this nice smoothness of the ribbon mic.
you can see I can make little subtle changes to get myself right where I want to be now that I understand what these controls do. Another good example of this would be utilizing the 4038, which is the Coles 4038 ribbon mic. And if we just kind of bring this back to like a cap edge, let's say, and one inch back, you're gonna notice this is almost seems like an unusable mic. Very wooly and full sounding. A lot of folks who put that on and just go, forget that mic. But watch what happens here. If I was to bring this over to the center of the cone, pull that distance back. It gets a much more balanced sound and much more usable, but still retains that nice quality the ribbon mics give us. I would take that any day over say a 57 and this is just giving me a real nice warmth to the overall sound. But again, we have to know that it's okay to maybe pull that distance that far back and not worry about the fact that maybe it seems like an extreme setting. All right, what do you guys think? I hope that that was somewhat helpful in kind of learning what choosing the microphone moving it on and off axis to extremes, what effect that actually has, and then using the distance control as well. So starting with the mic we want, maybe starting at cap edge, and then adjusting the distance so we get that low end right, and then utilizing the on and off axis position and the upper end high mids and top end right, and then maybe use the angle control to fine tune that, and then ultimately use your low and high cuts to even fine tune it more. I think you can see that utilizing the new features that we have as of firmware 3.5 in that cab block can be extremely powerful to get us to the final results we're looking for. So I hope you guys found that useful and helpful. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please like the video and share it with anybody who think we get some use or enjoyment out of watching it. And also please subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'm gonna leave you today with one of my favorite Line 6 Marketplace preset demos, which is the new what's called the D style preset. It used to be called the Dumblish preset. We've had to change the name of that for reasons I won't get into here but now if you already have this you, you still have it it's called the d style preset and uh, it's one of my favorite presets that kind of I, I i got in that ballpark of what i figure uh the helix would sound like if it was made to sound like a dumbbell amp and i really love this preset i love using it it's very inspiring to play with so i hope you guys enjoy that so thank you guys again so much for sharing your time with me i'll be back really soon with some more content ciao for now